So the topic is atmospheric perspective. If we look at this first image, um, this is not uh, really an art image. I just uh, searched online for uh, landscape images that people were sharing on, on Wikipedia. And this particular image is in Portugal, and I think it's a really excellent example of atmospheric perspective. Atmospheric perspective is the sense of depth that we get when we look out at a landscape and stuff that is far from us, it is obscured by atmosphere. So scientifically, the light waves that are coming from that stuff very far away, um, that, that light is being scattered by the molecules that are in the air. So when it gets to us, especially if there's a lot of water vapor, then that, that stuff is obscured. And here we see that really clearly as we look to uh, these hills or mountains in the background. Uh, they're quite, uh, kind of, they've been lightened, they're kind of grayed out. And the key thing I want to, uh, I will say a couple times during this presentation, is that it's not just that whatever is in the background is getting grayer or lighter, it is really a change in contrast. So if we look in the foreground here, we can see that we have both uh, the darkest darks and the lightest light. So we have this white from uh, what appears to be snow or sand, and then we have darks from these shadows. When we move back into the middle of this uh, photograph, so kind of the second, if we this is the first zone, maybe the, like the closest zone to us, if we go to this middle ground, like the second zone of this picture, you can see that the darks aren't quite as dark and the lights are not quite as light as the lights here. And then we move back to the third zone in the background, we, we get a sense that there's uh, very, very little contrast. So everything is, is in the middle. If we think about our gradation scale from class, you know, we are in the 2-3 zone. So atmospheric perspective is not only an actual property of the way that we see the world, but it's a tool that artists use to create depth in drawing and painting. Here we see a painting by Leonardo da Vinci from the 16th century, from the Italian Renaissance. And just like with that photograph, we see that the figures in the foreground, the figure of Virgin and Child with St. Anne, and this little lamb, um, they're in pretty high contrast. We have the lightest lights and we also have dark shadows. However, we're, excuse me, however, when we move to the background to this uh, kind of rocky landscape, this next image is from a 19th century book of natural illustrations. Why I like this is because it's similar to that first photograph uh, in, in that there are, a, we could see like three zones. So the first one being the high contrast foreground uh, that would include the leaves and maybe a couple of these. Uh, these are army worms. I also included it because it's just totally weird and interesting. Um, anyway, high contrast. Then we move into this middle ground uh, where we see these worms in some of the landscape, but again, the contrast is slightly less. And then we move into the background here where we have very low contrast. This next image. Uh, is a drawing by the American artist Thomas Eakins. Um, this is a preparatory drawing for a really famous painting. And why I included this one is because here we have atmospheric perspective being used uh, in a very exaggerated way. So, so here this technique is used um, to make this space seem large and to focus our attention on the foreground. Uh, to give you a little bit of background, if you're just wondering about this image, this is uh, how surgeries were uh, conducted at this time. And uh, this is a kind of classroom environment where all these people are here watching this surgeon. And then we have this um, family member cowering in, in the background. Um, so, yeah, kind of a strange image, but uh, anyway, just let me just point out again, the high contrast here medium level of contrast, and then low contrast. The next slide I have shows that in a diagram. Darkest darks, lightest lights, most detail here, and the figure, and these implements here. 
middle ground. Uh, it looks like this guy's a stenographer or something. Then we, we have this other person. So these uh, two figures, less detail, less contrast in the foreground, but still more so than the background that has very small shifts in value. Here we have an example uh, from a former student of mine. This is similar to what we're going to do as the next project. Um, it's going to be an ink drawing of a landscape. Here we see this birch tree. Uh, it's in high contrast with dark shadows and light highlights. We look to the middle ground. We see these bushes and these trees. This is taken, I believe, from a, a Japanese garden type setting. So here we have an area of middle contrast, and then if we go to the background, um, it's everything is very light in tone. So there's a, it's you know it's very little contrast. So I have two more examples. This one I showed in class uh, when I was talking about value, and not only is this a good example of using line plus wash to create value, it also shows a nice sense of atmosphere because of the high contrast with this tree and the low contrast with this background. And then another example of kind of a false atmospheric perspective or the, the, the tool of atmospheric perspective being used in a way um, where it's this would not actually uh, it's not a realistic way that it's used but it's used to create a sense of narrative or to exaggerate or focus our eyes on these particular figures in this composition. To give you a little bit more background, Dummier was a French artist who was also a satirist, so he, this appears to be, he's kind of making fun of these guys who are connoisseurs of this artwork. But again, I probably don't need to restate this, but these figures um, here and this, uh, these paintings or drawings in the foreground, we have high contrast here. And we move to these figures in the background, very sketchy, very light, so it seems like they're on the other side of the room. 